Tonight, we take a closer look at the approach of the President, Muhammad Buhari, the APC government on the state of the nation. I'm being joined by the special advisor to the President on media, Mr. Femi Adeshino. Thanks so much, Mr. Adeshino, for coming. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like you to uh, react to quickly on what uh, Chief Abdelbaba said. Um, he said it. This is not the first time. This is the second time that he said it. Um, uh, the governor of Imo said, uh, said, no, there is no grounds uh, on that, on the issue of interim government in our laws. But from the president's point of view, Chief Abdelbaba has said it again, saying that the issue of changing our constitution is paramount to solving our problems. And according to him, that Nigerians are suffering. What is the reaction of the presidency on this matter? Uh, well, um, I'm sure you know that some of us are educated, but we are not learned. Because <laughs> the lawyers say they are the learned ones. When it comes to issues like this, let's leave it for the learned ones. And that is why you have an attorney general of the Federation. He is the one competent to react to this. If I speak on it, I will be merely pontificating. And such an important issue does not call for pontification. It is those who know and who understand the pros and cons of it we should respond on it. What is the mind of uh, KV can tell us of the president in relation to the state of our constitution? Because we remember in 2019, the president did say that true federalism is the way to go. He's made that clear uh, at some fora. Uh, I think it was before or after the election. He was making reference to the, uh, the proposition and the recommendations made by the Nasser Erufai Committee set up by the APC. Is a president thinking in that respect? And if he had said that in 2019, what has become of that commitment? But there's a process going on in the National Assembly towards amending relevant aspects of the Constitution. So it shows you that the government believes in it because all the support the National Assembly needs, the president is given. The president or the executive will not come to amend the Constitution, no. Rather, if he's interested in anything, he to sponsor a bill, and it's the National Assembly that, he, that will do it. The National Assembly is in the process of amending the Constitution, and that is the right body to do it. Were there propositions from the executive? I am not sure. The Attorney General of the Federation will tell you if there are executive uh, inputs into that, uh, uh, into that amendment. Because, I mean, because it calls to question the willingness and the seriousness of this government in that respect, whether or not this government of the day thinks that there is a need to fix aspect of our constitution, especially in relation uh, to the uh, issue of security. For example, the former president, Olusha Gombasanjo, who perhaps didn't have that view before, maybe when he was in power, had said now that state policing is the way to go. Does the president believe in that, in, in that aspect? No, well, President, former President Obas Sonjo has a right to hold a different opinion from what he held in the past. But I recall that under him, restructuring of the Federation was a key issue that Feni Ferry fought for. And then there was the issue of state police, which also resonated loudly under him. He didn't do anything in eight years. Like I said, he has a right to change his mind now, but it does not remove the fact that he had opportunity to have done something about those issues then, and he didn't do. What is the biggest obstacle in the way of this government from doing same? No, um, it is, like I said earlier, it is not going to be by executive fire. It's going to be the duty of the National Assembly to do. So it's a matter of maybe a bill coming from within or from outside and for the National Assembly to look at. For those who say that there wasn't any political will to make that happen, and that's, the, I mean, what, what they refer to as a major problem of this Buhari government uh, making restructuring an agenda to be executed. That is uh, to say then the political will is the is, uh, that, that the executive is the custodian of political will, which is not true. So it does it make true. it right also for what Chief Abebola said, that if the government of the day is not willing to do it, 
can we put in place an interim government before the election it is to make it happen because he feels that that's the way to go to, and we cannot shy away from to it to the benefit of to the, the, the best of my on land knowledge is not in our constitution that an interim government be set up at any time it's not in our constitution therefore you can't impose that kind of thing on the polity without the National Assembly. Is, is the president aware of the statement from Chief Ababola? The president <laughs> listens to news, he reads the news. He's an avid reader of newspapers. He's not likely he's watching this program. So, what is his uh, view on this matter? I have not discussed that with him. You know, Chief Ababola spoke just yesterday or day before. I've not discussed this with the president, but I'm sure he's aware. Now, uh, what is happening to the 2014 CONFAB report? I'm very sure the dust that he has gathered in, since 2015 <laughs> in the shelf in the villa must have been this pile uh, tall. Uh, and so what is happening? Is it a dead affair? Is his government thinking about that report? Or that is the end of it as far as Nigeria is concerned? Uh, are you saying that dust is thick enough to even make a foundation of a house? It could be. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in literal terms or as a figure of speech. <laughs> well, the president was clear about that report then, in the early days of his administration, in the first term, that his party, the All Progressive Congress, had taken a principled position against that uh, process then. So he was not ready to look into it. That was his position in the early days of the administration. At another time, he said that it was in the purview of the National Assembly to look into things like that if the interest groups would bring it up before the National Assembly. As far as restructuring is concerned, should Nigerians be expecting anything from this government before the expiration? The president is also on record to have said that those who advocate restructuring do not even have a unanimous position. Let's agree that they don't. Yes. But what is the decision, the position of the government of the day? Well, anything that is good for this country, the government will do. Why is it not being done? Well, it, it depends. It depends on the way you see things. You know, they say when something faces you, then it turns its back to another person. It depends. Since there is no unanimity on what restructuring is already, then uh, you, you can't say the government has not done something about it. Look at some of the executive orders that the president has signed. Some order. of which the court have obtained. Yeah, the, the, the executive order because 10. they feel that is uh, ultra virus so, that is unconstitutional. So and now, the president took decision that is against the constitution. So are you now going to say the president didn't do anything about it? No, but it, uh, the laws, I mean, the court has said it did, but against the constitution. So look at some of those executive orders. They actually mean restructuring. Let's talk about the perhaps the biggest concern for Nigerians today. Security. Yes. I mean, he gave uh, an order to the service chiefs. And people will say, we've heard this before. Why has things gone bad again? He, we will continue to hear it until this thing is resolved. Do you think he holds water with Nigerians? Uh, no, no, not holding water with... Because when we hear it holds. over again, over and over again, it then means one thing to Nigerians, that what the president, the orders the president give, maybe he's not giving that kind of effect on those whom he gives the order it, to. It, it, is, it is not right. That is cynicism. That is scepticism, if you look at it that way. Then you are saying that the security agencies are not doing anything while they are doing a whole lot. But if the situation is complex and challenging, then we also have to understand that that is the way it is and believe and be positive. About this time last night, the president was meeting with traditional rulers from across the country, was breaking Ramadan fast with them. And one of the things he said was that security was the duty of everyone, including the traditional rulers. And he concluded by saying that he believed that we will see the back of this insecurity before his administration leaves office. That is the way to go. If a president comes out and says, ah, this insecurity is so terrible, we are all done for. Everybody to your tents. How do you think the country will be? 
the president must continue to inspire hope, inspire courage, inspire confidence in our security forces and encourage the populace. Well, because I guess the reason, maybe Nigerians may not be uh, demanding of the president if it, were, it, it wasn't a, a military general or if he's not a, a retired military general or perhaps if he hadn't made a commitment when he was taking office. He said he was going to lead from the front. Yes. He and said he was and, going and, to take and, decisions. And he's been doing that. He's been doing that. He told the traditional rulers last night that more than any administration in this country, he had funded our security agencies, he had equipped them, he had trained them, he had boosted their morale, and that is the truth. Go to the defense headquarters and let them give you comparative figures of all administrations till now, you seen that you will see that what the president said is the truth and nothing but. Is he worried though that perhaps if he thinks that he's putting everything that he has or he needed to put, and things are not getting us the right result, is he frustrated by that? Uh, the frustration may not be the word because if a president gets frustrated, what happens to the rest of the country? He well, may. Isn't it frustrating, Mr. Adesino? If, for example. You're wearing a white cloth mm -hmm. and it's stained, and you put every effort to remove the stain, and it's not. Won't you be frustrated? I'll, I'll look for a stronger. And you do, <laughs> and the stain still remains. Wouldn't it bring frustration? Because, if you, I mean, I'm, we are talking tonight, if we can show the figures of mm -hmm. how, many, how many people that have died in three months, almost 3,000 people, Mr. Additional, mm -hmm. have died. In, in this country. Take a look at it. This is by region. Mm. In northwest region alone, 1,103 people have died. In north central, 984. North east, 488. South east, 181. And not talking about those who have been abducted. This is a report released uh, on, uh, uh, what, okay, so this is by region now, uh, 127 in southwest, south, south, 85. Just a report between January and March this year. We're not talking about what has happened since President Buhari took over in 2015. And now, wouldn't this, all this kind of thing cause frustration? If you were living in Kaduna State or you are the governor of Kaduna State, the kind of frustration that we have heard from Governor Nasi Arufai, and that's the reason why I'm asking the question. If the president thinks that he has put everything in it, wouldn't that have generated some kind of confusion? I mean, uh, frustration. You know that not even one life should be lost wantonly in any country, not even one. Not to talk of the figures you have reeled out. But it's not all those figures and in all those regions that you have either insurgency or banditry or printing, there are even some self-inflicted wounds in some of those places where the killings are done by the people, the natives against the natives. So. Would you then say it is completely the fault of the president? Well, let's talk about, I mean, those are, those are exceptions. Oh, yes. but let's talk about the ones that are inflicted by terrorists, yes. bandits. Yes. And this government said he's going to fight it. Oh, yeah, and it's fighting. The dastardly acts or, or the attack on the train. And the government is fighting it. It's fighting it. Yes. It's not only, it, it, the government didn't only say it will fight it. It is fighting it. There are advances. But unfortunately, and sometimes there are reversals. But if you care to look at it carefully, there are more advances than reversals in this country. But when the advances come, they don't hit the headlines. But the security forces are doing a great job, a great, great job. Mm. Maybe the, uh, the, the commitment the president made that he's going to solve the insecurity problems of Nigeria. And if you look at the deaths that we see prior to the coming of this government and the one that we see. We shouldn't see. We shouldn't be comparing them. No, but you make comparison. No, we can make comparison. This government make comparison. We can make comparison so now you for some other reasons. It's not to compare death. We will and compare, death. Mr. Adishima. No, no, no. When no. Nigerians are dying. When, 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 when you seem to Lines compare. Are being lost. It is that is this when is not people politics. begin this to is, shout. This is reality, Mr. Uh, uh, you have asked me to come and speak. Yes, yes but don't allow me to speak. Go ahead, Mr. Adishima. But the question is that. We will make comparison if mm -hmm. people are dying. This mm -hmm. is the lives of innocent Nigerians. And do you know, because you started the comparison, do you know that there are some figures that will come up in previous administration that boggle the mind? In Yelwa Shendam, under Ulushe Gomba Sonjo, people were killed in thousands that led to declaration of a state of emergency in Plateau State. 
under the other governments. People were also killed in many hundreds. That's why it's not good to always compare figures because, like I said, one soul is already too many to die wantonly. We know we have a challenge in this country. Government is confronting that challenge, and we believe that the challenge will be surmounted. Now, uh, I like, I mean, because if you stay on this issue of security, it's an emotional matter. <laughs> if anybody who is watching tonight has lost anybody in mm. any bandit attack or terrorist attack, perhaps, I mean, it, it, it might be more emotional. It comes, than, it comes down to what I say. Yeah. Not even one soul should be lost. Yeah, so we're looking at a situation where it will not repeat itself because of the promises and the commitment made by government. And so if we were other government, we will still talk, and we've taken up other governments, even before President um, uh, Buhari's government. So another issue is corruption. One of the co uh, commitments made by this government is that it's going to fight corruption. But those who have uh, criticized the decision of his government in the proposition to free some, some thieves, uh, because that's what the court has called them, the highest court in the land, former governor in Plateau, former governor in Tarabo State. And so, so a lawyer has even said, why don't you just open the gates of the prisons and free all thieves or those who have been jailed? Because I, these I, are high profile I know, I know or politically you exposed about. persons. You know that that lawyer is a permanent critic. He criticizes everything. Okay, nothing, think, nothing is ever done right by him. But let's talk about the meat of that <laughs> criticism. Yes. I mean, the reason behind <laughs> if this government said he's fighting corruption, yes. is it justified to grant pardon what were to the, those What were the reasons adduced for the pardon? I was at that meeting. So tell us. It was a council of state meeting, usually attended by former heads of state and presidents, former chief justices of the federation, governors, sitting president, sitting vice president. They were there on Thursday last week when that meeting held. And the reasons, you know that there is a prerogative of mercy committee, which will sit and look at all presentations made to it, people who have applied to be pardoned under the prerogative of mercy. Now that committee will sit, look at it, and then make a recommendation to the Council of State. That was debated back and forth, and the reasons adduced for those two former governors were one, age, and two, severe ill health. Severe ill health. What does anybody gain? if eventually they die in prison. And the two of them are said to be in very, very bad shape. It is the quality of mercy. Like Shakespeare said, the quality of mercy is not strained. It's not strained. It drops gently. That is what the president has done. Maybe people may not be critical of your government if you had not made commitment to fighting hard corruption. Because according to the president at some point, he said if we not kill corruption, Corruption will kill this country. And so perhaps the reason why people are critical of this government, that look, if you are saying that even if there are proposition for the release of those who are being jailed for stealing the monies belonging to their state, should they be listened to? Because the proposition of those propositions are in the constitution are advisoria. They are not mandatory on the president. The president has a final call. Yes. So the president who said he's going to fight corruption hard, Morally speaking, is it justified? I have not seen how that pardon vitiates the war against corruption in any way. Mm. I have not seen it. Because the war continues. I have not seen how it vitiates it. Does it help it? Does it inspire it? Well, it depends on how you see things. Do you know that there are some Nigerians who will criticize anything? Anything. No, we are, However, positive we are talking or about negative. this one point. Yes. You say you are fighting corruption. Yes. Yet you are letting go those who are stolen the money of this country yes. as, the, as the law of the land. Uh, and you... how much mo the money that has been spent in prosecuting these people, the long years of prosecuting these people, these judges, justices of the Supreme Court and the federal, uh, the High Court and, the, and the, uh, the Appeal Court, all the sleepless night they've spent in ensuring that this happened. And these pe people think that you have rolled back all the successes that have been made it's, in fighting corruption. It's not, it's those are the views of uh, lawyers that have spoken well, in this regard. Uh, people who always have a right to their views. It does not mean that those views 
are casting concrete. Doesn't mean this those, government does not care about. It those, does not mean those, that those views are the holy grail. It does not mean that they are the laws of meds and partial. We cannot be broken. Isn't this government huh? working for the Nigerian people? Oh no! But, but that is why. That is why. That is why the government has a mandate. When you vote in a government, it has a mandate. It has the prerogative to exercise the mandate you have given it. That is what the president did. And if you look at that list, have you seen those involved in the Okaku? The Okaku, incidentally, is 32 years today. Today, April 22, 32 years. Now, they have been in jail for upwards of 30 years, if not more. Maybe for that, the, they were trying to The of Mercy Rule covers those kind yes. of military <laughs> insurrection and all of that, but we are particular about this issue of corruption. No, it, it, it's the same thing. The reason for the pardon was age and health. The government gains nothing if those former governors die. And the president does not think this will impact on his corruption Nobody, nobody abhors corruption more than the president. So for him to have even concurred to the recommendation of that prerogative, uh, prerogative of mercy committee, it's a, it's a higher morality. On was it difficult for him? Well, it was discussed. No, it was, was it discussed. difficult for the president? Because it was the one who made the commitment. Was it difficult for him to have taken that decision? You know that uh, it may not have been that it was at that meeting that the president knew for the first time. I'm sure that the committee must even have cleared the list with him. All right. So, uh, we need to go now. I uh, just have about 30 seconds. Uh, I need to ask you this. Uh, on the issue of the arms sale to Nigeria, the one billion US dollar, Yes. Uh, how far we did with that? It has been cleared. It has been cleared. The what arms. about, uh, what is, where's the latest on it? The, uh, the arms have been delivered. It was they cleared. They have been delivered? Yes. That's good, yes. good news. Before General Boratai left as uh, Chief of Army Staff, it was... Has it Nigeria was, paid in full? The arms are not bought off the shelf. You even pay ahead before they are manufactured. So we have those arms now. So, so Nigerians so, should be expecting the no, effectiveness. To the, and the, to the best of my knowledge, those arms had been in. They may not all have come, but I think a substantial part of them had, had arrived. Okay. This is from my addition, a special advisor to President Muhammad Buhari on media. Thank you so much for talking to us. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Have you. a wonderful evening. Thank you.